hello and welcome to the channel today we are going to look at a short video on how to audit interest expense by performing an interest expense reasonability so here we have our working paper and we have you're going to put the company's name um, the item you're testing which is um, interest expense reasonability and the client's year end is March 31st 2022 so you want to put the purpose. What is the purpose of this working paper? So the purpose of the working paper is to determine the interest reasonability on long-term debt, okay? So then what are some audit procedures that you have to perform in order to carry out this audit of interest expense? One, you have to obtain the loan agreement from the client. Also, you have to obtain um, the loan confirmation from the third party. And the third party can be like the lender. And the purpose of that is to confirm the actual balance on the loan. I remember that gives you a better audit evidence. Also, you want to obtain the client debt continuity schedule. And lastly, you're going to compare um, the balance and interest expense on the continuity schedule to your own recalculation. That is the interest expense reasonability calculation. Okay. And lastly, you have to conclude based on your findings. So let's see how we perform the interest expense reasonability. So here we have the loan summary because you have to always summarize your loan. Where, where are you going to get this information from? You can get this from either the loan agreement or the loan confirmation from the third party. So you are going to put the type of loan. If it's a private loan, if it's a mortgage or um, an equipment loan, you have to put it here. If there's any security or any collateral on the loan, you can indicate it. But in this particular case, there's no collateral on this loan. Also, if there's a uh, debt covenant or a financial covenant, you have to put it here. And the reason for that is because you as the auditor, you have to calculate to determine if the client is um, complying with the financial covenant. Okay. And also you have to put the interest rates. You're going to get this information from the loan agreement or the loan confirmation. So in this case, the interest rate was 15%. And also you have to put the maturity date of the loan. In this particular case, the loan is payable on demand. So when I looked at the agreement, I saw that the loan is payable on demand. So that is why we have it here. And then you have to put the loan balance. And in this particular case, the loan balance is 670. And you can see, I have a note here, it says reclass. I'm reclassifying it to current term loan because it is, pay, it is payable on demand. So if the loan is payable on demand, we have to assume that that loan is going to be like a current term loan, okay? So now let's see our interest expense. So this um, was my own calculation. So this is why I said estimated. So based on my calculation, I expect the interest expense to be this amount. Okay. But the client has this amount of 88,000. So you can see we have a difference. Although the amount is not material, NM means not material, but we're going to see how I perform my own interest expense reasonability. And I, you see, I put note one here. So if you go to note one, you are going to see how I perform my recalculation. So let's see how I perform my interest reasonability. So in this particular case, the client's year hand is March 31st, 2022. And um, as at last year, as at um, the previous year, they had a loan balance of 520,000, okay? So I have the beginning of the client's fiscal year end and then the end of the client's fiscal year end. And then the difference is what 364 days. So you're going to calculate that, right? So you can see my formula here. My formula is this minus this will give you the number of days, okay? So, and then on the 17th of June, the client took another loan, right? And then you also have to calculate the number of days that the loan was outstanding. So you do it for each loan that it took, okay? And then once you're done, you are not going to calculate your estimate, um, your interest expense on the loan. And the interest is at what? 15%. So let's see the formula I did here. So you can see I did 15% divided by the total number of days, right? And then I now multiplied it by the actual number of days and then the loan balance. Okay. So that was how I got my interest expense. So for each loan, you are going to calculate the interest expense taking into consideration the number of days, the interest rate, 
and then um the actual balance right so if you want to pause the video you can you know pause it at this point to look at my formula and then when i did that i got this was how i got my total interest okay so and then let's see so at the end of the year the client has a total loan balance of 670 and you can see that is what we have in our summary 670,000 okay so when i calculated my interest of 88,050 dollars i brought it right here okay and then this is what the client is showing in their own general ledger and now i'm saying based on my interest reasonability which i performed here there's a difference of $50, but this amount is not material. So I'm not going to do any follow up with the client. Okay. So this is for a case where the interest is like fixed, okay, at 15%. But let's look at another situation um, where we have something like this, where you have to perform like an amortization um, schedule. Okay. In this case, it is also very easy to determine the interest expense. So in this case, the client is showing that they have this amount in their general ledger as interest expense. So what are you going to do as the auditor? You are going to obtain the amortization schedule. So most times the client will provide you with the amortization schedule. But if the client does not provide you, then you have to do this calculation on your own. Okay. So um, since the client's year end is March 31st, right? So this is where we need it up to. So I'm just going to highlight it in green so um if the clients here end this uh, march at the first and then they took the loan january um in january 2022 so i would expect the total interest to be the sum of these three okay because from january to march so let me now say interest per recalculation okay so per your own recalculation, you expect the interest rate to be a sum of what of those three um, expense of so this one, one, two, three. So this will be my expectation. Okay. And then when we look at the difference, what will be our difference? We'll have a total difference of um, just about hundred dollars, which is also not material. Okay. So I'm just going to put not material right here. So this is how you perform um the interest expense reasonability so i'm just going to sum that up and i'm going to put this in blue to show that it is what's not material okay so this is in a situation where you have an amortization schedule okay so we've looked at two different instances here we didn't need an amortization schedule because the interest rate is fixed and we just had to calculate the interest based on the loan amount but in a situation where the interest changes from period to period then you have to uh, perform an amortization schedule and then you can determine the, int um, the interest based on the total month so i hope this video helps thanks for watching if you have any question please put it in the comment section and remember to subscribe to the channel i'm going to see you in my next video and bye